Hey everyone, this is Wally. Welcome to my kitchen. And I'm going to make a special treat today. It's called the Zeppeli. Um, Zeppeli is something that I've eaten uh, back in when I was uh, growing up in New York City. There's a uh, feast of uh, San Gennaro's Fair, which takes place about, about September in New York City. And uh, I, I live in Thailand now, so Zeppelis aren't something that I can easily find today. One day I decided, you know, I'm just gonna make it myself. But in Thailand, we have something called uh, Patongo. It's similar fried donut. Uh, except that in Thailand, we use um, a uh, pandan coconut custard uh, or maybe just sweet condensed milk. But the Zeppeli that I'm referring to are the New York City style pizzeria type where there's like loads and loads of um, powdered sugar. Because in certain regions of uh, Italy, uh, they have regional Zeppelis uh, where they'll put like uh, maybe uh, anchovies or ricotta cheese into the recipe. Uh, but as I mentioned, this recipe it's basically um, all about uh, the New York, uh, New York City uh, pizzeria style. Okay, so it's a very basic, simple recipe. One teaspoon of active yeast, which is this. I'm gonna add it to one cup of warm water. This water is at about 105 to 110 degrees, uh, which is perfect for, um, for the yeast to grow. And I'm just gonna give this a stir just to help it along. Uh, normally, you would have to add some salt to this. This is the recipe that I got from uh, the Italian chef, uh, com. I'm gonna put his recipe at the link below. But instead of adding salt into this mix, this yeast and water mix, I'm gonna put it into my flour. So I have one teaspoon of yeast in here. And to feed this, I'm gonna put one tablespoon of sugar. There you go, give this a stir. So in here is one teaspoon of yeast and one cup of water with one tablespoon of uh, sugar. So the Italian chef's recipe tells you to add a one teaspoon of salt into the yeast mixture, but I normally don't add uh, salt to my yeast mixtures because I think that salt would hamper the growth of um, the yeast, but it's, it's a debate. Um, it's up to you, however you want to do it, but normally when I make uh, some type of bread uh, recipe, I normally, uh, add the salt you know in different times which is this one so this one i'm adding in this bowl i'm going to add two cups all-purpose flour you don't need to sift it that's one cup and two and then one teaspoon of salt into the flour all right that's that so i have to wait for the yeast to just do its work do its magic um it should be take about two to five minutes. So one of the reasons why I'm making Zeppelis is that it's a very nostalgic little treat. When I was a kid growing up in New York City, my mom and dad uh, or my older brother would take me down to the San Gennaro's Fair um, during September. It's held annually every year. When I was checking around uh, Zeppeli information, I found out that there was a Zeppeli eating contest, um, I think just started last year, 2019, uh, in L Little Italy. And uh, it sounds like a real fun thing to do. Um, but I'm living here in Thailand now, so I'm here and um, you can't really find Zeppelis um, in Thailand, but you'll find like some kind of different variations um, because pretty much every country has fried donuts. Um, it's one of those little treats that, that just crosses cultural boundaries and barriers. No matter what, everybody recognizes fried donuts. So that's why I'm making it here. Okay, so about three minutes have passed and my yeast mixture has grown. Don't know if you can see that, but it's got a, like some foam in uh, on top there. Uh, so I'm just gonna first, remember I added salt directly on top of my flour. I'm just gonna make sure I disperse it a little bit more just by mixing it with my silicone heat resistant spatula. This is actually one of the best in kitchen investments you can ever have in your kitchen. Um, I prefer using this over uh, wooden spoons. I'll show you why later. So just give this a mix. Make sure that the salt is just dispersed throughout the flour. Okay, and then I'm gonna add my yeast. All right, at this point, don't forget to add one tablespoon of oil, okay? Because I forgot one time and it actually makes a difference because with the oil, it'll make your Zeppelis more moist. So one time when I forgot to add oil to this recipe, it just didn't have the same texture. So make sure you add oil, okay? And then you just mix it right now, combine it, and this will become a soft dough. At first, I'm just gonna be gentle so that it doesn't splash all over the place. Uh, these silicone spatulas are great for scraping the sides of the bowl so you get every nook and cranny, all right? And it's coming together now, you can see. Okay, so 
you might look at this and you might go, all right, this is ready. Um, it's not. Uh, you got to mix it at least 30 seconds vigorously. Uh, the reason why is you want to develop the glutens in the flour uh, because if you don't do it, when you fry it and when it comes out, uh, the texture is not going to be as springy. So you got to give it a good stir like this. Work the glutens while you're mixing the bowl. This portion here is not a lot. It'll actually make about 20 to uh, 24 zeppelis that are the size of about two to three golf balls, uh, which is a decent portion. Okay, so after you mix this up for like uh, about 30 seconds uh, vigorously uh, with a spatula or whatever wooden spoon you have, time to wrap this up with a uh, plastic film because you have to let this rise uh, so that it'll double in size and let yeast uh, do its uh, magic work. And at this point, you want to seal up your bowl with some cling wrap. And then on top, just for extra measure, I'm gonna put a damp towel on top. All right, like this for an extra seal. Okay, so you wanna leave mix uh, at the warmest part of your house. Um, since I'm in Thailand, that's pretty much everywhere inside my home. Uh, but anyways, um, you have to give this uh, about an hour to an hour and a half. Um, to double in size or maybe even triple. Um, so during this time, I'll probably go walk my cats. Um, so I see you later. Okay, now I'm back and I told you, wasn't kidding, I do walk my cats every morning. Um, they just love to go out every morning. What can I say? Um, so, okay, so my dough has risen. Uh, it's been about an hour and as you can see It's about tripled in size and it's a very wet dough, but that's what I'm looking for. That's what you need here. Okay um, So I got my pot of oil going there. Um, you gotta take it up to about 350 degrees um, There's two ways for you to well for me there is there's two ways for me uh, to put in um this uh, batter, a Zeppeli batter, into the hot oil. Um, you can use uh, two spoons like this, scoop one up, and just, you know, dish it into the oil like this, all right? But because I used to have a cafe and a bakery in Bangkok, I have these. Um, I use these, um, I used it to scoop a cupcake batter. But uh, for this one, I find that I can use this to scoop up the Zeppeli batter and uh, this is about a tablespoon and a half size. Um, you can buy these like on Amazon, anywhere, basically. But uh, you can use this and this would give um, about the size of maybe two to three golf balls uh, when you, after you fry it, right? So it's a pretty big, decent size. In San Gennaro's Fair, uh, back in New York City's Little Italy, um, I, I noticed that, um, I didn't know it, but if I knew then what I know now, um, it's kind of disgusting. If you think about it, right? They use their hands, they, they dip it into the batter, and then they just scoop it into the uh, fry, uh, into the oil, the frying oil. Um, yeah, if I knew if I knew about that back then, I probably would, you know, wouldn't be like such a fan of Zeppelis. But uh, in any case, don't do that because uh, for one, it's gross. Don't use your hands. Um, use a scooper like this, or use two spoons. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna take this over and I'm gonna fry it right now. Okay, so my pot of oil is at 350 degrees. So I'm gonna start scooping it in. Uh, but before I do it, I'm gonna put my uh, scooper inside the hot oil just to get it greased a little bit and then just go in. And then you place it in. So there goes number one, two. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's six inside. It'll take about a minute to cook up and always have a uh, slotted spoon to help it turn. Uh, sometimes it'll turn itself on its own and sometimes it'll just leave a little bit of a help. What you're looking for is a golden brown color on both sides. This one, that's golden brown right there. We gotta help it along, gotta turn it. All right, so that's what you're looking for. Okay, that's that. First batch is done. I'll just put it on my sheet pan here, my rack with a uh, wired mesh. Let it drain here. Okay, so I took on my first batch and I waited for about a minute for the heat to go back up uh, for the oil before I go ahead and put in the second batch. There you go. 
So Zeppoli, as I said, they're from Italy. And since Italy is a uh, country of regional cooking, there are certain parts of Italy that will make Zeppoli's with uh, ricotta cheese or with uh, rice potatoes. And uh, some even put uh, like raisins or anchovies inside uh, the Zeppoli's. But this recipe is a, to me, is a tr more of a traditional New York City style pizzeria Zeppoli. But funny thing is, is every time when I go back to New York every year, um, I, I see less and less pizzerias selling Zeppoli. Um, actually, I've seen maybe, like maybe one or two. Um, there are a lot of uh, pizzerias in New York City, so maybe it's something that people don't enjoy as much anymore, I guess. Anyway, in San Gennaro's uh, feast in Little Italy, these are always popular. People would go and they, they would line up for Zeppelis. Maybe it's a, like, a, like a once in a while treat. Uh, but for me, because I'm living in Thailand now, uh, I can't get these anywhere. I mean, as I said, there's this potongo, uh, which is a, a Thai style a Zeppeli. People enjoy it as a breakfast with uh, custards. Uh, but for me, this I know I can make easily. So I'll just make it myself, no big deal. So I'll just dump a bunch of powdered sugar, which is a uh, traditional way of eating Zeppelis, San Gennaro's feast. That's what we're looking for, golden brown, okay? Okay, here's another batch. So as you can see, Zeppelis are very, very easy to make. Um, there are a lot of cultures that make their variations of a fried donut. As I said, in Thailand, we have a patongo. And for Cantonese, I know we have a yao jamin and uh, many other variations of a fried dough. If you're watching this from a different country and you have some fried donuts, uh, your version of fried donuts, uh, go ahead and leave a comment below and let me know uh, the name of your fried donuts. Is it ready to turn? And if you see that it's browning too fast, it's okay to lower the heat a little bit. As I said, this normally takes about a minute to fry up to the right consistency. All right, just turn it over, give it a helping hand. And of course, the smaller ones will fry up faster, so just keep an eye on the smaller pieces. Okay, so I have about 19 pieces right here. As I said, this recipe makes about like 20 or so Zeppelis. But if you have this, if you have the scooper here, this scraper, you can sort of work it and just get all the extras so that you get one more really good sized Zeppeli. Yeah, it actually, this actually could have been two Zeppelis, but it's all right. This is, uh, this one's going to be mine. I'm not sharing this one. And that's it. And we're done. And there you have it. My Zeppelis. Okay. But it's not finished yet. Uh, we got to add some powdered sugar. No, actually some. I actually need a lot. Um, powdered sugar is part of the fun and enjoyment of eating Zeppelis at the San Gennaro's Fair in Little Italy. Put this in like that. And then just go nuts. In San Gennaro's Fair, they'll put these inside a paper bag with a liberal dousing of powdered sugar. And they'll just shake, shake it up inside the bag so that all the pieces get a really good coating of powdered sugar. I'm kind of on a diet, so I can't really go as nuts as um, what you see over in San Gennaro's. Uh, so, okay, maybe just one more spoon. All right, it's one more spoonful, okay? All right, so there you go, okay? Yeah, you know, I mean, when I make these and when I see these, when I eat these, it just brings me back to um, the time um, in New York City, walking through the feast. Um, my dad would buy like a big old uh, sausage and pepper sandwich. And uh, I remember I would look forward to eating these um, because it's just, you know, you just really couldn't find it around a lot. There it goes. Maybe I need more, but I'm happy like this, okay? And then I have to plate it. So put that there. Put this here. Put this piece here. Well dusted. Zeppeli there. This guy over here. Oh, these are still hot. All right. Oh no. Okay, crap. Like that and like that. So these are for my wife and these are all for me. Plating earns you brownie points with your loved one. Okay, remember that, all right? Oh, one more thing. I need coffee because this is breakfast actually. So, gonna need some coffee. And that's it.
that's it. And now we're finished. My Zeppelins. It's tasting time now. So I'm gonna try and not get any powdered sugar on my nose. I don't want my neighbors to think I'm a coke addict, so. Mmm. Can you hear the crunchiness? Take a look at the dough here. I mean, look at that. You squeeze it, it'll pop to its original shape. Okay, everyone, uh, so that's it. Thanks for watching this video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. Um, if you're interested in seeing what I'm making in the future, um, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and also hit the bell notification button so you see uh, the videos uh, that I upload um, instantly. Um, it was certainly fun doing this. Um, I hope that uh, you would come back and check out my uh, other uh, videos on this channel. So I hope to see you next time and I hope you really do make this because it's fun, it's tasty. So I'll see you next time, okay? Take care folks, bye.